Yeah. Welcome to the Win Make Give podcast. 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 Pod. Is that good on the echo, Bob? <laughs> you got a little bit, a little bit. You're you're packed up now, right? Everything's packed up, and you're in like a, a bare naked room. Except achieve your apex is still behind you. Uh, you know what you need is you need like a backpack that you just wear out in public that like kind of put it just pushes that thing about I don't know three or four feet behind you, so it's always just imposing behind you as you're walking through the street. One of those like sandwich board things that yeah. you know, would hang behind me. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, uh, you're right, Bob. So audience, forgive me. I mentioned this on the uh, a recent episode. We are recording, and I am in the midst of the move that I have yeah. talked about. This is actually the last episode. I will record from Georgia. Ooh. So, Bob, I have now recorded the Win Make Give podcast in Washington yep. and in Georgia. Yep. The next episode we record together, I will be recording from Florida. You have also recorded from Washington. So that okay. Where else have you been? Because you have zoomed in we don't oh, use yeah. zoom but you have zoomed in from a few hotels on the road oh i mean i so i've been in uh texas doing it one time i've been in colorado doing it one time i've been in california i know those three off the top of my head have you ever been north of the border that we can say we recorded internationally oh Ooh. some of our guests have been from over the pond so yeah. we can say we've recorded it. I'm just wondering if you and I no, have I've, been I've personally never been outside of the United States. I'm trying to think if I ever jumped on one in Wait, Mexico, but the, I don't think you so. You have never been in all of your years outside of the U.S. No, 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 United no, no, States? No, no. I, I meant to record our podcast. Oh, okay. yeah, never, I mean, we go to Mexico every year. Like, I, right. I love like, Canada. I like, do you just consider that part of there. the United States? No, I mean, but I've been, to, I've been to, let's see, where have I? I don't know. I've been to Australia. I've been okay. to uh, Hong Kong. Sing, or uh, the Philippines and and Bangkok. I've been to Germany, France, Switzerland. Um, I've You've never traveled. traveled. Yeah, I've traveled. But um, these days, not not a, a lot of that travel was twenty five years ago. These days, it's, we do Mexico and Hawaii. That's kind of what my wife and, and the family. All right, you ready for this? Watch this, Bob. So, with all of this traveling, the environment is different everywhere oh. you go, isn't it? It is. Uh -huh. You know what's funny is I'll, I'll anytime I'm on and that I am traveling, Chad, and I and I have to tap into work. It, it's very common for me, especially if I'm doing something over a Zoom or something, to to mention it because I'm just not in my element. You know, I get I'm I'm very laid out here. I've got two monitors. I've got my lighting good, yep. right? Like, um, so I I very much from that first kind of physical workspace design when I am on the road traveling and having to to work on the road. It's a challenge, right? Because I'm so yeah. used to the design of my workspace as I have it laid out. All right. So audience, before That's a I great go transition, look at, you. Huh? look at you. Right? I'm still I still got that. Before I continue with that transition that we were getting into, I do want to know where was your favorite place that you have traveled, not want to travel, have traveled. If you were going to recommend to Bob and I that we go on a vacation somewhere, yeah, the two of us, we're going to do it. We're going to go on a vacation. Get where should we go? Where's your favorite place? Right, can Tony? I do mine? Can I do mine? Or will you do well, yours? Hang on. I got to give the plug to join us in our Facebook okay, group, okay. right? Facebook.com slash win, make, give. I'll post. You comment. Bob's going to tell you his answer now. He's going to also comment on the post when it's there. So w when I was in my, I think I was like 20, my, my parents took us on this vacation to Asia and my parents did a lot of business over there. We went to this place in the Philippines, Chad, called Pamalacan Island, and it's an Amon Pulo resort on this little island in the Philippines called Pamalacan Island. It's the only thing on the island is this resort. The week before we were there, David Copperfield and Claudia Schiffer had had their honeymoon there. Like That's what kind of place this is. There's 45 um, rooms, essentially, but they're all individual oh, like casitas, so there's 15 down on the beach. They're, they're these huts, right? Like your room is this in this hut. And then there's uh, 45 on the, the hillside and 45 on the mountain, this, this, this little mountain. Um, it was so, – so a maximum of 90 people could be on the side at any given time because you got to have like two people in a, in a room. And there's like 300 employees. I, Chad – you would be sitting out on the beach. This is no bullshit. You would be my brother and I, right? And I don't. They don't have drinking. So we're my, like we're sneaking off from my mom. We're like out there, like sipping a pina colada, right? I don't know whatever we were doing at twenty and eighteen. And when you, if you would like, you finished it, and there was a slurping sound. Somebody would materialize 
out of the bushes, dude. That's because Copperfield was there. Yeah, Oof. they'd materialize and just be like, would you like another pina colada? And you're like, where did you come from? Like, <laughs> 10 seconds ago, I was looking everywhere, and it was just me and my brother out here, and now you just come out of the blue because you heard a slurping sound at the end of my drink. Like, it was unbelievable. It's probably, I, I mean, I don't know if I've ever, like, I'll never probably have a vacation experience like that again in my life, but um Amon Pulo, they, they have resorts around the, the world. If you're ever looking to do something really elevated, Amon Pulo Resorts, Chad. All right. I will put that uh, on our list. I will tell everybody our place. There was a winery just outside of Orvieto, which is in Italy, in the Umbria province, on a gorgeous hillside. Mm. There was a thunderstorm happening out there. We were sitting under an umbrella, just watching the rain, the thunder, the lightning, and having a, a charcuterie board and wine. Uh, probably one of my favorite. One of those places. like picture perfect memories, right? Yeah, like you can absolutely. smell every sense, you can feel the the clouds in the sky. Like I, I can love that. still smell the the rain pouring over all the grapes and all that stuff. All right, the environment matters, and, and it matters so much, Bob. Whether it's on vacation, what you're looking for, whether it's our work, whether it's our success, it mattered so much. When I put you on the spot earlier uh, this week and said, Bob pick a topic, right? It's on you this week to pick a topic so we can get some research done. You said, I got nothing. And then you came back to me like three seconds later and said, wait, I got something. Well, here's why. I mean, like always. You use chat GPT. Well, no, I use it to help me. No, here's, here's why that was the topic, right? I'm like, I'm redoing my workspace. I've been uh-huh. bitching about this chat. Every time we have a guest on, if they got a cool background, I'm like, I love your background. Yep. Um, so I'm like reimagining the space that where I, you are right now, or is that where the I'm space? At right now, the space yep. that I'm in, yeah. And you can't see the others. You can't see like what I stare at, right? right. But um, I'm reimagining this space, and so the 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 topic of like productivity and and how does my environment play an impact on you know how does it impact my productivity? Like when you were like, hey, I need an idea. I literally told you I'm out of ideas, Chad. I don't have yeah. any more ideas in my head. I just wasn't feeling very. Um, and then four creative. seconds later, you had an idea. Well, then I'm like. You know, right after I texted that to you, I thought to myself, what am I struggling with? And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I'm redoing my environment. And I'm yeah. like, I wonder if I'm going to be more productive. It just it came together very fast after I – Absolutely. After and I you sent off. me a message. You said, hey, let's let's talk about the power of environment and how it mixes with productivity. And my response immediately, Bob, was, well, that's chapter one of Achieve Your Apex, right? I mean, yeah. I love that because nothing takes more priority than your environment. Everybody puts so much stuff ahead of it, Bob. Everybody puts – what should I say? Everybody puts, what should I be doing? Everybody puts, you know, how do I, this, whether it's with my, my spouse, my partner, whether it's through work, nobody stops to say, how does my environment add to or subtract from it? I mean, the great, what I say in the book about, take the greatest killing machine on the planet, the great white shark and put him in a forest. He's useless, right? Take the lion, the king of the jungle, put him in a desert. He's in a lot of trouble. Okay environment is one of the key things that changes everything for us. So Bob, today we are going to discuss the connection between environment and productivity. Dave, insert dramatic music there. I don't think, I don't think anything happened. I don't think Dave listens to it. No, I don't think he heard that to do that. So <laughs> audience, insert some dramatic music right there in your own head. <laughs> right. All right, Bob, where do you want to start? You're the one with this challenge. Uh, I- so I just want to maybe go through some of the things that we should be thinking about as we're as we're kind of laying out that that perfect environment or workspace for us, Chad. Um, and so I'm just I'm just gonna honestly I'm gonna do it from kind of how I've been thinking about this as I. And by the way, I've been working on this environment for a while, right? And, and one yep. of the very first things that I realized is, man, I get ang- anxious from clutter. And okay. for a long time, I would just let my environment be cluttered. Sure. Um, clutter is going to increase your stress levels. Even if I love clutter, like Nita hates it. We share, a, a, she very rarely comes into the, where the desk is, right? But she's sometimes, she, but she just hates when there's clutter. To me, on the other hand, it's a controlled chaos. I see it differently. But clutter, Bob, is one of those things. It's going to create a lot of stress, which is, of course, going to reduce productivity. It's going to reduce that connection with your partner. Think about when there's dirt and, and stuff everywhere. I think I saw uh, uh, Brittany. I think it was Brittany uh, who had the posting on Facebook of her laundry and it was like 
the whole dining room table was covered with what like are you talking, like Britney Spears. Who is that? Who you're talking about or what? Are you no, for sale. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay, got it. Got so it, got it. She's listening. I'm giving her a shout out. Right, I wasn't going to throw her under the bus. Got it, got she it. has like all this laundry out and says, you know, it takes months, not days, not, no it, months for us to actually get this all cleared and all this stuff. That would free it, your environment should be free of clutter would be number one. I don't care if you're like me and like chaos, clutter is still going to block up that energy. It, uh, even from a time savings. So here's what I've done. Like, and this was, I probably did this two years ago, right? I'm like, man, my, okay. my space is cluttered. It's like simple little things. Like I, I'm, they can't see, but like, I got this little, I didn't used to have one of these on my desk, right? It's just he's like talking a little. About he's got a little like little, pen holder. Yeah, a little pen holder, a little basket thing, right? So I've got a pair of scissors, scissors in there and a, some tape and my earphones. I do have, by the way, I, I always use these plug-in ones. Yep. I do have some some non-plug-in ones. Yeah, I got the I got the non-plug-in nope, ones, right? right? But anyway, my pens. Like before, I would constantly not have a pen at my desk, so I would probably spend three minutes a day like, where the frick is my pen? Where did I put my stupid pen? That's where it's at now. I got all these. Uh, you know, I got lots of connections, right? I got a printer under my desk. I got different yep. screens. I got, um, sometimes I, I got a different mic that I like to use. And, a you know, I, I got a phone to keep it charged. Yeah. yeah. So they got, now that, yeah, wow. you like that? I got like nice a little, look. I don't even the know what this is. You can't thing. see that we gave away in the Wealth Series gift bags. And one of the things that uh, I, Bob and I really wanted, we got these little tech bags for holding your, your, char- your battery chargers, portable chargers, your cords, your cables, things like that. That's what Bob just held up. Yeah. So now all my all that stuff is in one place. It goes back in there. It, and this is all stuff, by the way, that used to just sit around my desk if it even stayed on my desk. I don't know where the pens always go. I think my kids take them and draw on the couch or something. But um, do you now, mean sit on the couch and draw, or literally draw on the couch? <laughs> I meant draw on the couch, which they don't do. They're good boys. Um, but n- now it's like I know where everything's at. It's just not cluttered, and I feel the sense of like. Like when I sit down at my desk, it's like, ah. okay. yeah, and that, it used that, to be like, uh, yeah, it'd be like, uh, okay, where's my pen? Where's my, um, I can even feel my shoulders, like just saying it, they like kind of relax. Okay. So number one, folks, declutter, right? Bring some organization in. That's absolutely going to be something that is, that is important when it comes to it. Bob, I'm going to tell you one of the things that I think is key and it's going to sound silly. It's certain colors because certain colors spark certain moods for certain people. Okay. We interviewed somebody. The episode probably dropped maybe even a month or two ago by now. Uh, we interviewed somebody and her whole background was purple, right? And she was wearing purple and her book cover was purple. And it was the first thing I noted was the purple of it. And purple is a color that just inspires me and motivates me and fires me up now, it didn't end up on the cover of my book. It didn't end up in my own personal company logo only because it didn't make sense for where I was going. Yet, it was the first concept. My first concept for everything is usually purple, right? Because that color inspires me and I like to be able to see that. So on my calendar, certain things are purple because they inspire me and influence me when I see the calendar, little things like that. And then there are colors. I'm just not a fan of certain colors. Right. And the brown, I mean, it's okay. Leather, all that stuff. It's very, it's bad. It's bad. It's right. So there's no brown anywhere in my workspace, anywhere in my view, because I don't want to see it because it just makes me feel drab. I love that. Yeah. I blue, light blue. In fact, the color of your achieve your apex. That's like my, that's the color to me that is just calming. I could sit and look at a, at a blue sky for 12 hours. Like I literally could. And so I've got a couple things in here. Now that you're saying that, though, I'm like, man, I should. Sometimes I'll open this window over here, which I've got right here, and I can see that blue sky. And even having that extra blue sky up there, you can see the sun on my face now, which is not yep. very common here in Seattle, but <laughs> it's just out there today. Um, even having that blue right there is, it just, it makes me feel calm. And, and I tend to do my best work when I'm calm and I don't have anxiety in my shoulders. Yeah, folks, you're going to have your colors, right? And and we've already asked the question of vacation, so let's stick with that. Yeah, you're going to have your colors, some color that doesn't work for you, right? Bob, what's the color? I I said brown. What's the color that you – it's just not going in my space because it's just a – it just pulls me down color, right? And it could be a bright one. There are some people who be like, I don't want pink. I'm just so not a pink person, right, or whatever. 
Uh, I'll let Bob figure out what that color yellow. is. Yellow. Mine's yellow. I don't know why. I'm just not a fan of yellow. I don't know why. That's because you live in Washington. You don't see the sun very that often. That could be it. That could be it. I'm adverse to the, the sun. Yeah. So, folks, there are colors that are going to inspire you. There are colors that are going to calm you. There are colors that are going to depress you. Make sure when you're creating an environment, whether that's your family room where you sit and hang out with your family the most, whether that's your workspace, make sure you're considering these things as you pull it all together. All right. So, Bob, we... We're going to help you declutter. We're going to help you organize better. We're going to help you as you recreate that to start getting some more blue in there, maybe a painting, a picture. I can send you the Achieve Your Apex poster if you just want to put it on your wall to give you that comment, right? What's the next thing that Bob needs to really grasp onto to build the ideal environment for you? Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to comfort next. Okay. Um, <laughs> probably for like, I don't know, man. probably three years, I think my wife, yeah, two years. For two years, at one point in my career, and this was a while ago, I worked at this desk, this, where the, it was like a bar stool. I basically worked on a bar stool, uh, you know, a tall, like, Ooh, and. That's not comfortable. No, it was really uncomfortable. And, and I could have done something about it is the stupid thing is I just didn't. <laughs> yep. um, when, when, when we moved into this space, you can't see my, the chair I now have. Now it looks here, like a wicker bar chair. Well, it's, it's one of these ergonomic. It's, it's, really, it's a really it's a Herman okay. Miller chair. It's a really expensive. My wife's company. Oh, yeah. Her, your wife stole it from work. That's right. You, we told that story during COVID. Story. They were shutting down one of the, the floors of their office, and they had us. We could go over there, and I'm like, I'm not taking that chair. It was like a, it's a really expensive chair, but it's really comfortable. Like, really comfortable. And I, I would never have thought or considered it before. It's Chad, sometimes I'm drawn to this space in the house to just sit and think or whatever, because it is like the most comfortable chair I have in my house. I love the, I've got all the settings good. Like it, it, it fits me, right? I'm kind of a bigger guy. And so it's, it's just good. Yeah. Um, comfort, man. Like I like sitting in my space, right? And it's not that I, before when I was sitting on the bar stool, I don't even think I realized that I was just as ready to get out of that thing and go do something else as, as anything. What a great point, Bob. If we're not comfortable in our space, why would we be in it? We're going to do everything we can to get out of that space. Okay, so you're talking comfort. I want to bring something that kind of goes with the comfort, Bob, and then I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to ask you a question. I'm not going to give you much time, so I'm going to spot answer from you here, right? Okay. Personalization in your in your workspace. Yeah, Brian. Right. I, 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 Brian Gubernick has an inspired. Okay, me so I'll that might you, be I'll the answer you, already. To the I'll question. Let you finish. I'll right? let you finish. I'm assuming I the question, but go if if you yeah. want to finish. That yeah, personalization is the thing. I don't care whether that's a little knickknack, right? I have this thing on my desk. It's a turtle. His shell comes off. He holds paper clips. Not that I need paper clips anymore, and little things like that. And it was made at one of those pottery painting places when I took my daughter. She made it for me. So it sits on my desk, right? I have pictures of my wife that are on my desk. I have a little Captain America shield over here that my daughter and I built in this little metal thing. It gives me, okay, you've got to have those little personalizations. It's what I loved about going over to Zappos office, right? They were allowed to personalize that, all these little figurines and all these little things on their desk. And then you go to some offices where it's like sterile, right? And nobody wants to be there. So you've got to make sure, Bob, as you're putting this together, personalize. Now, you already kind of figured where I was going to go. I didn't, I, this was one of the, probably the top three or four. I'd have to really think hard. Yet I know I would throw this in one of my top three or four. Of all of our guests, because you always go drooly, drooly over their backgrounds when they're nice. Who had the background that makes you say, that's the kind of concept I want to do because I, I really know, love I don't that. even know if he was a guest on the podcast. I mean, he has been. We had him in studio years ago. Brian Gubernick, I don't know if you've seen. So he's got – Yeah, seen we him. had him with his he oh, hero yeah. wall. Yeah, yeah. He's got this hero wall. So I, I've, I've started to adopt that. I've taken a slightly different model here. I'll show you. Um, well, the audience can't see, Bob. Wait, can you can – you, you can see I that. see it looks like maybe Jesse Owens. I see yeah, a track card. Yeah, so this is a, this is a card. So I've started buying these, these old cards. And, and my intention is to get one of just people that I admire. And so that when I'm ever sitting at this desk and I think, man, 
I don't know if I can do that. I can look at this card of Jesse Owens as a black American going over to the Nazis and like winning the Olympics, you know, like he went to Germany. He didn't go to the Nazis. He went to Germany. He went and stomped on those (laughs) stupid Nazis. Um, But so, so I got the Jesse Owens card and like, I've got uh, Jay-Z because I think it's amazing that that you can just become a billionaire out of nothing. Or I've got the Magic Johnson rookie uh, who transformed the NBA and, and kind of put that thing on his shoulders. And um, I've also got, by the way, this is maybe one of my favorite things. Can you see this? I see a, it looks like a jar of a word I shouldn't say because children fucks, might be listening. Chad. And, yeah. and this, once I'm out of these, I will have no fucks left to give. But I do have some fucks to give right now. And here they are. Kids, sorry if you heard that. Um, this was a gift from a friend of mine, Carrie Naslin Monday. She gave me one of those uh, at Windmate or at Built How, and then my kid broke it. And so I was like, Carrie, do you have any more of those? Like, could you send me another one? It used to sit on my desk right here. And so she sent me a whole, a whole thing of it. Yes, I have a lot of personalization, but I haven't always. Right. I haven't always. And so um, honestly, Brian inspired me to kind of make my environment in front of my eyes. Chad, you can't, they can't see us, but you know that I'm pulling all this stuff from in front of me, right? Yeah. It's, it's on the other side of my computer. I, I want to look up every day and be inspired yes. by, by people. And so I want, I, I've got my kids and my wife here. They're, they're, in, they're in two pictures here, right? I've got um, a picture of me and my best men for my wedding to remember all the people that, are, that kind of have my back. Yep. Right. And then, and now I'm starting to build out this kind of wall of people that inspire me. I want to look up every day in my personalized environment and, and had, and there, there's meaning everywhere I look here. Cause I yeah. sit here for, you know, I sit here for a lot of the day. Yeah. And mine's all packed up because as I said, uh, I'm, I'm recording the last in this, in this space. Uh, and you can be sure we've already planned. And I say we, cause Nita's involved in that. Of course, we've already planned. Where's the desk going? What's going around it? My background will be different because it'll also be the home gym, right? Which will inspire me. Yet, what are those things that I'm going to be putting in front of me on the wall, on the bookshelves that are going to be in my line of sight? So like you say, Bob, we're always inspired. So folks, if you're building out a workspace, again, a living room, a bedroom, different things should go in different spaces. I'm amazed When I walk into someone's bedroom, if they're showing me their house or when I was a real estate agent, they have some pictures up there. And I'm like, those aren't pictures I would want around me when I'm going to sleep at night. Or if it's the intimate space with me and my partner, I don't need, you know, mom on the nightstand, right? (laughs) Those pictures could go in the living room. So personalize all of your spaces for what the space requires. And that's the amazing thing. Bob's talking about he's personalizing his home workspace. But he's also got the bedroom with with his wife, which is another space. He's got the room where the boys and him will watch TV together. That's another space. How do you personalize each space? How do you put the right colors in the right space? How do you put the comfort in the right space for what that space is going to do, Bob, as we keep going through these ways to create an environment that works for you? What's the next challenge you've got as we get kind of down to some of those things? I'm I'm kind of... I'm chuckling at this one because I don't know that I'm always great at this, but every, so my wife and I work together, right? And I work down in our basement. My office kind of set up in our basement. And so the basement's temperature and air quality is what I want to talk about. And the basement's always perfect for me. It's cool, right? Chad, I mentioned I'm kind of a bigger guy. I'm getting older. Like I run hot. Or sometimes I run cold and I'm like, that's fine. Let's grab a little blanket set over my legs like an old man. But my wife will come down here like, not every single day, but probably every other day or every third day. And she'll be like, man, like it's stuffy down here. And she'll like open all the windows and the doors, even sometimes it's raining out or whatever. She'll just like, she'll open from both sides. Right. And man, 10 minutes later, I'm like, I feel good. The air's it's fresh. You know, it's moving through here. It's so like, I, sometimes that's that little stuff. You don't even think about it. And you're just sitting in that stuffy little room. Right. Um, yep. some of you guys don't fan, have right get a, get a fan in your space yeah. folks put a live plant not a fake plant that says put a live plant that helps with the air quality whatever that's going to be because again there some of these things like uh we're talking about decluttering and, and, and organizing bob okay that's obvious what it does color might not be as obvious that when you see something that's blue in bob's case he his shoulders will just sat that little bit or when i see purple i just that little more let's go right Uh, like a a cape, a red cape for the bull. Same thing with air. You're not going to necessarily sit there and say, 
hmm, the air in here is stale because you've been in that space so long, but it's going to absolutely unconsciously impact what you've got going on. Absolutely. Like okay. 100%. Bob, here's one thing I want to throw at our audience that I don't think they think about when they think about their environment. Okay. And that's how many different environments you have within your environment. Mm -hmm. So you're sitting right now. I am. I'm standing. We are at two different environments because you are looking at whatever you're looking at. But now imagine getting on a call, Bob, whether it's an interview or whether, and you're standing up. You've got a new environment in front of you because you're higher. I do. Right? Beethoven's up on that higher environment. Um, hey, right. I'm trying to land this Winston Churchill card. I got for Ben. Well, I'm, I, I was originally. So yes, originally I was like, oh, I'm going to get this for Ben. So it's, it was in an auction and I lost the auction. The card went up to like $400 and I'm like, all right, I'm out. And like, th there's 10 of this, this card out in the world. Um, it's, there's a lot of that card, but the, the grading on it, the, the high end grading, yep. there's 10 of them that are graded a PSA nine in the world. And one of them's up for auction. There's another one right now up for auction. There's another auction coming up in like three weeks that has it again. So I initially, Chad, I'm like, I thought I had it till up to the very last day. It was only at like a hundred bucks. I'm like, Oh, I'm gonna that's how it works. Bob. I'm going to give it to Ben. And then the last day it was basically, I'm sure me and some other guy just going back and forth. And I finally at 380, I'm like, it I was probably out. Ben. Well, maybe this is funny. I'm going down to see him next week. So I'm going to ask him because the, the, the next one I'm in it right now. And, and it, again, I'm, there's me and another guy, but I don't know at $400 if I'm going to give it to him. Like if I end up winning this second one at 400, I might just go up here on my wall to there you hire go. me. Okay. Now folks, think about it wherever you are. I mean, maybe you're in your car, maybe you're in your office, whatever it is. You've got two environments right in front of you at home because you're standing and you're sitting. There's a completely different energy. Right. As we were designing the office in the new space, Nita was like, well, let's put a nice little desk here. And I'm like, I can't. I have to stand. Right. I can't do a podcast sitting down. My energy is different. I'm a speaker. I stand. I move. I do that stuff. I sit down when I'm doing officey stuff. So my environment needs to be different. Down here, when I'm lower, I need to be in kind of that office thinking stuff. When I'm standing is where my creativity is. Yet, Bob, I also have environments on my right, on my left, and behind me. So maybe when you're in creative mode, maybe you need to spin that chair 180 yeah. degrees and be looking at the stuff behind you. Now, can you design that environment to be more creative or conducive to the creative concept? I'm not going to lie. I'm annoyed by what's behind me, Chad. We haven't been out. This is like a, this is a, it's like, this is, it's good. I'm, I'm glad I'm annoyed, I guess. I don't know. We haven't been out to our Airbnb, like our rental property that we bought on the lake to like enjoy in the summer times. We haven't been there in like three months because it's been being rented, which is sure. awesome. Um, but all the stuff that we plan to take out there the next time we go is behind me right now. So there's a whole bunch of clutter behind me. Why didn't you make me spin around? Now I'm like, now my shoulders are back up by my ears. Okay. Look out the window. Now turn out the window because <laughs> you need calming, <laughs> right? And there's your blue sky. <laughs> and again, that's another environment. Okay. Bob knows he needs to calm down a little bit. He can turn to what will be his left looking out his window. He can turn, right? He needs to have a conversation with him. Maybe he turns to his right because the way the, the space looks like it, it opens to the right. Does. So that's when you can have that conversation with, with the family or somebody. I want everyone to understand that your environment doesn't just mean this one I'm looking at space, right? Because you are looking at one space more often than not, yet standing and sitting are two. And to the left and to the right, are, are four more than because it's standing and sitting each way. And then behind you is two. So remember, you are actually in eight environments in almost every room that you're in. And in the bedroom, you get a ninth because you're laying down, right? That ceiling is an environment. And I, I, I just, his name just blanked out of my head and the chicken soup for the soul guy, right? I believe it was him. He used to have a check on the ceiling that he had wrote you know, this big oversized check for like a million dollars or something like that, that every night before he went to bed, it was the last thing he saw. And when he woke up in the morning, it was the first thing that he saw uh, that he would have that check up there to be that. So understand, folks, there are environments. It doesn't just mean the room. It means the different ways you're looking in the room. Prepare it correctly. Chad, maybe one last thing, just because it's productivity and, and I'm talking about the environment and I'm looking around and, and maybe for me, one of the biggest productivity hacks of my- Jack Canfield. 
Jack Canfield uh, was his name. Thank you. Just came in. soup for the soul for sure. Yeah. Um, Another one I, on the I, list. Last I, one. I, I, I would call this just technology in general. Like, yeah. are you constantly battling with your technology in your workspace, right? Like, I, I, I honestly, I have this printer. It, it, I paid so much for this stupid thing 10 years ago. I should get rid of it because I have to plug it in each time. Like, I should probably have a wireless printer and just really upgrade like that piece. Yep. I don't use – how often do I print? Most of the stuff right. I print is for my wife. Like she's returning something. She's like, I need this return label I need the print. Amazon label printed. So I'm like, okay, let me figure this out and get this stupid thing plugged in again because I got a couple other things plugged into my computer. But I'll tell you, what t- technologically, probably the biggest hack I've had in productivity – I work on my computer. I think a lot yep. of our people, they, they spend a portion of their work day is like engage with their computer. Yep. Uh, a second screen, Chad. Do you, do you, are you a two screen guy? Yeah. I, I am a two. Screen. I attempted to be a three. The new Mac won't run a third unless it's an iPad. I can, I can have an iPad here that could become my third screen. Uh, but I've, I'm absolutely a two screen. That, I mean, that's why I, while I'm talking to you, yeah, you're looking, you, yeah. I, I can sometimes look over cause I'm looking something up or I'm grabbing a note or something like that. Cause yes, there's always that second screen. I, I don't know how one screen. I can't are. do it anymore. Like, like when, when I'm go, in a hotel, yeah. I, I'm going nuts. I yeah. mean, almost on every single call I get on, if I'm in a hotel, the first thing I say is <laughs> give me some yeah. grace. I'm working from one screen today. Right. Exactly. Like I can't. Whenever I, whenever we're on like a Zoom call and somebody's like, "Oh, I, I couldn't see that because it's behind the the window," I'm like, "You're a friggin' one screener." Yep. You are a one screener. That's right. <laughs> Shame yeah, on you. Right. Anyway. You, you're right. Technology matters. Do we have things that are up to date? That doesn't mean you have to go buy the latest and greatest, right? I actually went into the Apple Store a few months ago. Big shout out to the Apple Store team. Uh, I was looking at the new laptops that had come out. Uh, and the person said to me, how old yours? What's your last laptop? And, and I told them what I have. And she said, it's not worth your money, right? The upgrade's not worth your money. Don't come in and, and spend a few hundred dollars different, you know, because we'll buy back your, you're not going to see any difference. She says, wait two years, right? And then you'll want at that point, because something massive will probably have changed. Same thing with our cell phones. Think about the people, Bob, that you knew just two, three years ago that were still clinging onto their flip phone, or something like that. It's like, it, I don't even know if technology, by the way, is the right word. Cause as I'm looking around my works, it's more like the tools I need to do my business. Now, yeah. most of them are tech related, right? I got my microphone and I've got my headphones and I've got my, my ring light. And, but, but I'm looking over here and like, I have to do a bunch of video. I record a bunch of video and stuff for our team that they the use camera, in advertisements. Yeah, well, I've got my tripod right here. Right. Yeah. And it was probably a year ago. I had this kind of shitty one and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to upgrade that. Cause I use it like once a week and, and I want it to be easy. And so now I've got that one. And I just, as I look around my space, um, it's, it's, the, it's really tools. Like what kind of tools do you need to make you more efficient in your space? And are you, you know, worried about spending that 50 bucks on something that could make you a thousand dollars more productive, right? Absolutely. Um, right. Yeah. It's the tools. It's the apps, right? Are we using those right apps? It's the technology, right? Do you have, I mean, today's dr- drove me crazy because I usually have, I guess I can say it, she's not here. I usually have an Alexa within, you know, speaking distance. So when I'm working on something and I need her to put some on the grocery list because I'm thinking about something or I need her to turn some light on or do something, I can just Alexa, Alexa, Alexa. She's packed. Right. So today I must have talked to her three times. I wondered why she didn't do anything. And I was like, oh, wait, she's not there anymore. That's why we've got her put away. Absolutely. Do you have the right tools? Are you using the right internet? Right. I mean, remember when we had dial up internet, you couldn't be doing the stuff we're doing now if we were on dial up internet. Somebody out there is still running on some really low speed. Yeah, if you need it. Comcast. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God I'm not getting them with the move either. Uh, I, I can avoid having to bring them back into my world. All right, folks, your environment matters. It's so much, in my opinion, that I, again, I made it chapter one because it had to start there. It mattered so much that Bob has been sitting there paralyzed as he's working on redesigning this space to be as efficient for him as possible. And he, we gave, look, go declutter, go organize your space, figure out the colors that should be there and shouldn't be there and maybe in different walls for different meanings and things. Think about the comfort. Do you enjoy being in your space? Do you feel comfortable? Are your chair, is your chair a good chair for you? A desk the right height for you? 
whatever those comfort things are. Are you personalizing that space? Are you making it yours? Make it uncomfortable if somebody else comes to work in your space temporarily. If that's your space, make it your space, right? Do you have your temperature right in the space? Are you getting airflow if that's something that you need, right? Do you have a fan or a door opener or a window if that's an option? And then, of course, make sure the tools and technology that you have at your disposal are really the ones that are going to help get you where you're going. Bob, last thoughts on the environment. When are we going to see your new one? Maybe. I'll show it to you one day. Nobody else though, Chad, nobody else. Right. I don't know. I, so right, I'm, I got to redo this wall. Right now I've got these shelves that hold things. And so these cars, I, need, so I don't know. Maybe on the other side of your move, when you show me your new rooms that you're working in, I'll show you what I've done here to, to spruce it up. All right, perfect. Folks, come join us in our Facebook group because I asked you at the beginning of this, when we talked environment, we also meant places, right? This wasn't just an office conversation. This might mean your bedroom. This might mean your living room, your kitchen, things like that, your car. Yeah, we also talked about the environment being places. Bob and I already gave you our favorite place. If we were going to recommend somewhere that you go, we want you to come into the Facebook group, Win, Make, Give. Tell us where you would send us if there was somewhere you were telling us we should go. We look forward to hearing that. We look forward to hearing about your environments. And we look forward to sharing more with you week after week after week because Bob's creativity will be re-sparked. Mm. Folks, until our next episode, as always, do good.